So today I woke up to the unfortunate news that Trezor has found a vulnerability in their latest hardware wallets, the Safe 3 and the Safe 5. But it's not just Trezor hardware wallets or even hardware wallets in general. Any device on the market that uses this vulnerable chip might be affected. That said, I need to dive into what this vulnerability is and how it works because a lot of us are still wondering what the heck is going on and I'll explain everything you need to know in this video. So the more I look into this vulnerability, the more interesting it gets. And what's really surprising is that this vulnerability went unnoticed for 14 years, even after being tested through 80 different security evaluations. And of course, I'm not just talking about the hardware wallet devices themselves, but rather the chips used inside of them. The big question here is what is this attack and should we be worried? Well, the attack is known as a side channel attack and this can occur when an attacker uses hints such as power consumption or timing to steal data from a secure device. Now to do this, they need physical access to the device, they need the proper tools, and of course they need the expertise. More specifically, the vulnerable component here is the secure element chip found in several hardware devices on the market today. And in a hardware wallet, as you already know, a secure element chip protects your private key and is used to carry out cryptographic transactions. Now this vulnerability in question allows attackers to use electromagnetic readings to obtain the ECDSA secret key from a device with this affected chip. ECDSA stands for Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm, and it's the key used to sign transactions and prove ownership of your crypto assets. So if someone could extract this key, they might be able to gain access to your funds on your hardware wallet, but remember, this vulnerability does require physical access to your hardware wallet device. According to Ninja Lab, who discovered this vulnerability, it doesn't just affect hardware wallets. This issue could impact any device using an Infineon secure element chip, and that includes YubiKey 5 series authentication devices, some electronic passports, EMV chips and certain bank cards, and even phones like Samsung and OnePlus. In terms of hardware wallets, which is what most of us are most concerned with, this vulnerability is linked to the Trezor Safe 3 and Safe 5 models, along with other hardware wallet brands using Infineon chips such as Jupyter, Kivo, CQX, IMKey, Hash Wallet, and Hypermate. So if you use any of these wallets, it's really important to understand how your device uses the secure element chip to determine if your device could be affected. Because again, every hardware wallet is different and every hardware wallet utilizes a secure element chip for different things. To determine if this vulnerability affects each wallet, we need to examine how each device works. So I'll quickly cover each wallet that I mentioned to see if it's potentially impacted. And just remember guys and gals, I'm not a developer, I'm not a computer scientist. So while I've done a lot of my own research, I could be unaware of some security components, so I might be missing something, but this should give you a general overview of how the wallet uses a secure element chip and whether or not it could be vulnerable to a side channel attack. Let's start with one of the lesser known brands, Jupiter. Now, according to Jupiter, your private keys are stored securely inside a heavily fortified and isolated secure element. Well, since Jupiter uses a vulnerable Infineon chip to store the private key, it's possible that a side channel attack could extract it plain and simple. Next, we have Kivo, still a lesser known brand, but I do know a few people who use this wallet and actually like it. And Kivo uses a dual chip architecture, which means they use two chips for different functions. So Kivo generates your private master key in the secure chip, but it's not actually stored there. Instead, it's split into key shares. So one share is stored on the secure chip inside the wallet. The second share is encrypted with your user generated password. The third share is encrypted with your fingerprint. And the fourth is stored on the carbon key, which is a separate device that connects to the Kivo wallet. Given the setup, it's unlikely that the private key could be extracted from the secure element, considering the secure element only stores one share of the entire private key. A more popular brand using this vulnerable Infineon chip is the CQX wallets, and I actually own the CQX Nifty, as you can see right here. I'm not a huge fan of CQX, not for this reason, just because I've never really liked their wallet, and I'll just leave it at that for right now. But according to CQX, the chip stores your PIN and your private key, and the only additional security used with the secure element is a self-destruct mechanism that destroys data when the chip is exposed to light. However, since side channel attacks don't involve exposing the internals of a wallet to light, this self-destruct feature wouldn't help in preventing a side channel attack. Next is Hash Wallet, and I hadn't even heard of this wallet until this vulnerability came up. And since Hash Wallet stores both your seed phrase and private key on the Infineon chip, it's 
possible that a side channel attack could affect it. Hypermate is another wallet I had never heard of until recently that also stores a private key on the vulnerable Infineon chip. And despite having several security features, there isn't a specific feature that I found that would clearly prevent a side channel attack from extracting the private key. And finally, let's examine the two most popular hardware wallets using these vulnerable Infineon chips, and that is the Trezor Say 3 and the Trezor Say 5, both of which I've recommended multiple times on this channel. Fortunately, even though these wallets use the vulnerable Infineon chips, they're not at risk of being compromised via a side channel attack. The way that Trezor has these wallets set up is that the secure element doesn't actually know your pin, your seed phrase, your private key, and no code runs on the secure element itself. All the secure element does is store a secret that's used to decrypt your recovery seed. So even if a side channel attack were attempted, it would not be able to extract the private key from either safe wallets. Now, looking forward, I asked Trezor if this vulnerability could be fixed through a simple firmware update. Unfortunately, they did not tell me what I wanted to hear. And they said, no, it's a chip vulnerability, not our software. This is both good and bad. Bad because any device that uses this vulnerable chip will likely have to replace the chip or use a different kind of chip so that it's not vulnerable anymore. Good because most hardware wallets on the market are designed to prevent side channel attack and other physical and digital attacks. But if you're currently using any one of the wallets that I mentioned, or maybe even one that I didn't mention, you're probably wondering, what do I do now? Is my crypto secure? Should I send all my crypto to Alex for safekeeping? Just kidding, don't do that, that's way too much responsibility. No, but seriously, I want you to leave this video with some actionable tips so that you can continue to use your hardware wallet to secure your crypto. And just as importantly, to do it stress-free. So here's my opinion. If you're using any hardware wallet that I mentioned in this video that uses a vulnerable Infineon Secure Element chip, you're probably gonna be okay. If you're using one of the wallets that's immune to a side channel attack, such as the Trezor Safe 3, the Safe 5, or Kivo, then this vulnerability is not going to compromise your wallet in any way. You're not going to lose your crypto, even if the secure element inside the wallet is vulnerable to a side channel attack. That said, if you're using one of the harder wallets I mentioned that could be vulnerable to a side channel attack, you should really only be worried if you honestly think that someone is going to break into your house or the bank or wherever you keep your hardware wallet wallet, physically get your their hands on the device and then using a special tool and having the expertise, they're going to extract your private key so that they can gain access to your crypto. If you're not worried about that happening to you, then this vulnerability is really not a big deal as far as your crypto security goes. So the best thing that you can do here for this specific vulnerability for your hardware wallet is make sure that it's stored in a secure location. Don't give anyone that you don't want to have access to it access to it. That said, I understand you might just want to get into a harder wallet that doesn't use an Infineon Secure Element chip, and I cover a bunch of my favorite wallets in this next video. Just ignore the two Trezor wallets and you'll be good to go. So definitely check that out. I'll see you there. Peace out.